Uh, good morning, school authorities, classmates, and teachers. My name is Luciana Llorado, and in this opportunity with my classmates, Mia Huitano and Joaquin Pinto, we will present an activity that we did on the third term called the Shark Tank. You may or may not know what Shark Tank is, so we'll explain it very briefly. In the second week of class, we did an activity that resembled a TV show called Shark Tank, in which entrepreneurs present their ideas to millionaires who are willing to invest in them. These business women and men have a certain amount of time to present their ideas and the so-called sharks or the millionaires um, ask them questions in order to know how much they should uh, invest in their ideas or how, the, how they work. This is the syllabus that was presented to us in the semester, and it contains brief information about what we were going to do throughout the process of the shark tank activity. This is the opener of the unit that was presented to us during the semester, and again, it contains briefly the information that we were going to do and talk about, as well as the key concepts, the related concepts, the global context, and the statement of inquiry that we will be talking about later on in the presentation. So here we can see some of the skills we developed during this activity and by master. So these skills help us both academically and professionally in the future. So some of these skills are the communication skills, creative thinking skills, collaboration skills, et cetera. So here we can see the the inquiry process, which is well, the thing that we all know here, which is the inquiry, action, reflection process that we follow during a lot of our school activities. So let's see how the term concepts relate to this activity. So the key concept for this term was connections. And we could see the relationship between this concept and the short term activity from two points of view. The first one is that we worked in groups. Therefore, we, we had to work in, together in collaboration to present the product. This way, we could build connections among our peers and get to know each other a bit more. The other point of view is the fact that we, or well, our teacher, brought the idea from a TV program into our virtual classroom. In this way, connecting our interests from the outside entertainment world into the class. The related concept is context. In this case, it has a close relationship in the activity when it comes to the role each one of us had to play. Some of us were business people, some were sharks, and depending on which group you were in, you had to adjust to the context of the situation. So now we have the global context, which is scientific and technical innovation. And this relationship is closely linked to the activity because of the creativity that this activity took in order to be completed, because taking something literally out of the TV into our virtual classroom takes a lot of work and a lot of creativity, besides the fact that we had to play the role of a grown up in the business industry also takes creativity from our part. So uh, it also gave us a wider perspective of how classes can be entertaining and not necessarily all the same and quite boring at times. Now we have the statement of inquiry, which is 21st century skills help you to develop your thinking and identity best fit learning styles. They provide the context for becoming a modern, well-connected learner and active participant in today's world of scientific and technical innovation. So first, let's see the 21st century skills. Here we have them, which are critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity, all of which we developed whilst uh, working in groups for the Shark Tank activity and while doing this uh, presentation. So do they help us to be a more modern and well-connected learner? Of course they do, since they give us uh, social skills, which we need to be more connected in our society and be able to understand each other. And since we worked in groups, we developed all the skills previously mentioned because we had to brainstorm ideas, we had to communicate among our peers. The first question, what are 21st century skills? Well, as presented previously by Luciana, 21st century skills are such a skills that are crucial in this time since of their importance in order to um, socialize and as well as work better um, in today's society. And how do we learn them? Well, since they are so important, they are now being taught in schools um, with the help of our teachers. And as well as since we know the importance of them, um, we alone try to learn them. 
conceptual questions. What are effective skills in problem solving and critical thinking in the 21st century? Well, um, the effective skills that are crucial and important in problem solving and critical thinking are creativity since they are really helpful in order to create um, the solutions in problem solving and as well as the ideas in the critical thinking um, uh, in the critical thinking yeah. <laughs> debatable question is education necessary in order to become successful well in our opinion um, education isn't really necessary in order to do so since we can always um, learn throughout the process of becoming so and even learning more things that we thought we would and is technology taking over teaching? Well, for us, since we're in a pandemic, in order to communicate with other people, we need the technology in order to do so. so. Therefore, technology is kind of taking over, but that doesn't mean that we don't need people to guide us through the process of learning, like teachers or our own parents to do so. So now we have the objective of the task. In this case, of course, the shutdown activity was neither in person nor stream on live TV because we had to accommodate the circumstances of virtual classes. The teacher explained that we were going to be in breakout rooms and assigned the task that was creating the class of the future, taking in accountability the foundations like the pandemic, um, the sanitation, and technology. So we were put into breakout rooms and started working on the product. However, when we were brainstorming ideas, the teacher came into our breakout room and told us that we were the sharks. This meant that we didn't have to present an infographic or we didn't have to have a presentation, but rather we had to evaluate our peers with a rubric that we will discuss later. So on the day of the actual presentation, we were told to turn off our mics and microphone, uh, sorry, our cameras and microphones to be anonymous. And this, uh, this whole activity took two days to be planned. In the first one, we planned our rubric and uh, the groups presented. And the second one, we evaluated our peers. So now we will see some of the projects our peers presented, not only from this class, which is 9A, but also from 9B and 9C. So what we are seeing is specifically are the infographics, which show the details and materials that the, the students plan to use this well, as we can see, many of the infographics are quite similar since, I mean, they all had quite similar ideas because they all had to take into consideration the same pilots and we are in the pandemic, right? So the ideas were very uh, similar among each other, but of course they had different, uh, the way they did it were kind of different. But who won in our classes? The winners for us um, were Flavia, Cesar, and Valentina. This is part of their presentation that contains um, a lot of how the class would be distributed and basically what programs would they use. And it was really nicely done. The presentation was really um, pretty basically, and it contained a lot of information that for us was very important to choose them as a winner. Obviously for choosing a winner, we use an standardized criteria. This rubric was made one day before the presentations when we found out we were the sharks. The purpose of this rubric was to give the same winning opportunities to each group with the same exact criteria. So here you can see that we used four criterions for it. Those were quality, innovation, visual, and price. Quality means how effective the idea is, considering their efforts to maintain sustainability with ecological ideas, as well as how their infographic explains their product. The second one, which is innovation, refers to how common this concept was in the class. If they were presenting something new and different or just another product. Also, it mentions how viable the idea is. The third one, which is visual, ref refers to how it looks in relation to the effort given by the students in detailing their product and illustrating it in the infographic, obviously. And the last one, which is price. So this has to do with the inquiring the students did to find, to find out the real prices that they were going to use for the materials of their product. So here we got the diplomas that Ms. Molcholi gave to the winners, as previously mentioned, Flavia, Cesar, and Valentina. So we are now basically heading to the end of the presentation. However, we have to discuss the verification or the task that we did after the shark tank. So basically, our teacher, Ms. Molcholi, made two tasks in one. First, she evaluated our ability to express ourselves in an essay, and she received feedback from the students uh, because of the tasks that we did the short time. So uh, the specific task was 
uh, you need to write an opinion essay about the shared time context with maximum 350 words. So we basically wrote everything we felt, everything we thought that we had felt <laughs> in the shark tank. And we just wrote it in an essay, we turned it in and she knew what to do next and what not to do in the continuous cast. So now we have the metacognition and we will answer some of the questions. So what have we learned throughout the process of this activity, the shark tank? Well, in our opinion, and personally, I think I've learned how to evaluate somebody else and as well as creating a rubric, which is very important um, since it gives us a point of view of how a teacher feels and also how it feels to evaluate someone else taking um, in account all of the things that requires to have a good presentation. So the second question is what has been the hardest and what has been the easiest for us? I think that the easiest part of this project was maybe working in groups because we have a pretty good group and everybody like communicated well and we understood each other pretty well. So we did work together and that was great. And now maybe the hardest part was evaluating our peers as Maya said, because it can be quite tedious and we didn't have much experience with doing that. Also doing the presentation you are seeing right now because we had to choose a lot of things to put and we had to organize ourselves in the order of the presentation. So the third question, which is how was it useful? So as you can think, there are two sides here, the shark and the entrepreneurs. So I think the entrepreneurs they develop their organizational and collaborative skills because they were a group and they had to present our product as well as they asked their communicative skills because they had to talk to us and present and sell us their idea. And as the sharks, we develop our critical thinking skills when evaluating them. Finally, how would it be useful in the future? Well, as I said before, creating a rubric and having the perspective of a teacher is really useful since it not only like give us a guide of if someone wants to be a teacher in the future, it kind of has an idea of how it works, but as well as it gives us a, a really good point of view about how we should think of how a teacher thinks beforehand making a presentation, like taking in account all of the things that we thought in order to create a rubric, in order for us when presenting, have a big and better point of view of what to do and what not to do. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.